Okay, ladies and gentlemen, right back at you on a Monday, Monday evening. This is your boy, Stevie Ray, host of the world's most dangerous podcast here on a Monday night. And this is what we do. This is the world's most dangerous podcast. Coming off a very good weekend. Hope everybody out there listening, watching, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on Twitch, whether you're on any other carriers out there. I'm on all of them, man. YouTube, it don't matter. Whichever one you're listening to. Hey, man, subscribe, like, share. Subscribe, like, share. Because that's what we do. Now, lately, I've been having a few technical difficulties with my setup and my software. But I'm getting it worked out, man. And because of that, I can't have guests right now. But I'm going to get it worked out. I will get it worked out. You know, I always do. Just the fact that I've been kind of busy and trying to mess with it. But it's a new beginning this week. And that's what I'm going to be working on this week. So we can get everything right. What's up, lunch break? What's up, Cron? What's up, Eric? What's up, Loman? Everything's all good in the crib, brother. It's all good in the hood. Woo, dog. Account settings are off date. See, that's what it goes right there. It says my account setting is off date. I got to get that fixed. But don't worry, brother. It ain't nothing to it but to do it. And that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know something, Crumb? That's not right, bro. That's not right. We're getting ready to go into WrestleMania in the next couple of weeks, man. That's not right, Ron. Even though I cannot deny what you are saying, but that's not right, man. You know, you, you should keep things like that to yourself, man. Hit me on DM or something like that. You don't supposed to put things out there for the whole world to see. But I can't stop you, man. That's your, that's your MO, bro. You know, that's just your MO. What's up, Calcutta? You know, but uh, like I said, guys, like, share, subscribe. World's Most Dangerous Podcast. We got it cooking, man. We got things cooking. Man, this is the deal. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's always your bad. You get a kick out of it. Man, I walked in a house, man. I walked in my little condo here, man. You know, which I love to death because, man, I lived in a big house for 20 years, right at 20 years, 18 and a half, something like that. And I don't miss it at all. But when I walk into my two bedroom condo, man, and I got upstairs, downstairs, two bedroom, two out, uh, two bathrooms, two bathrooms. I made one of my bedrooms into my gym. And this is why I do my podcast, is what I call my dungeon. And uh, big kitchen, you know, breakfast area, the whole thing. And I love it, man, because I'm just one guy. I'm just one guy, Eric. Eric, what you talking about, man? Eric said, I saw Ernest the cat say you was the worst driver because <laughs> Ernest don't know nothing, uh, Eric. You know, I don't want to hear nothing about these guys and what they say about Stevie Ray, man. What for Stevie Ray? None of them would have survived, Eric. They don't talk about that, Eric. What about that, Eric? They don't talk about how Stevie Ray had to pull them out of situations and 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 get in their ear about certain things. Or they wouldn't have survived. What about that? We want to talk about old Ray, dog. Talk about that. You dig? Let's talk about that. I don't see nobody saying that, Eric. 
You know why? You know why, Eric? Because they would be exposing themselves. Yes. I wouldn't let the cat drive because he wouldn't, he didn't even have a driver's license. He didn't even have a driver's license. No, I'm not letting him drive. I've driven all over this country. 49 states. Can you dig it, Eric? Have you driven in 49 states, Eric? I've driven in every state except for Hawaii. You hear me, Eric? You want to bring up what the cat said? Because we were arguing all the time. That's why. He, he didn't mention that of all the bloviating bull crap he was always bringing up. What about that, Eric? Let's talk about it. And when I get him on the show, okay. In Hawaii, you have to acknowledge, I ain't want to drive in Hawaii. I ain't want to go to Hawaii. I'm just saying, 49 states. How many people on? How many people you know have driven in 49 states? Yes. Yeah. Man, did have. Oh no, Eric. Uh, me and Cat used to ride together, not all the time, but sometime. Because that was back when he was coming in, and I was doing the uh, NWO thing with uh brian adams or either god rest his soul uh virgil or scott norton stuff like that and sometimes those guys are coming from different states and ernest and i you know he's coming from atlanta i'm i mean georgia i'm coming from texas and some of the flights are similar so we would get together and ride together and stuff like that those are some memorable trips man some very memorable trips man Ernest Miller is my boy. You know, I know I talk about him like a dog. I know I do. But when I talk about somebody like a dog, that means I love you, bro. That means I love you. If I excoriate your name or something like that and tell you I don't give a shit about somebody, that means I don't give two shits about your fucking ass and I don't give a shit who it is. That's just me, though. Hey, that's the way I was raised, bro. But uh, Calcutta said, I heard from Mattel Torres this weekend on your Monday Night War figure in blue gear and black gear. Stevie is to chase the congratulations. You know something, Calcutta? I just got a batch of, uh, I appreciate that, Calcutta. I just got a batch of like baseball cards that I got to sign, man. Well, actually, I got them a few weeks ago, but I hadn't finished them. Then they just sent me some more with me and my brother on pictures together. So something's going on, brother. I did hear about that, Calcutta, but, you know, I'm always the last to know anything. You know, I'm, I'm always the last to know. But be that as it may, what I was getting to is I'm walking in my house, man, a couple of hours ago. And on my television... I'm looking at all these police in riot gear, so on and so forth. And then I hear the guy on the news goes, they're raiding Puff Daddy's house. <laughs> P. Diddy's house is being raided by Homeland Security. Did anybody see this? What the hell is really going on, man? And then I'm uh, uh, then I'm looking at another station, and it's in his they're raiding his home in L.A. and Miami at the same time. I, dog, I swear this is like some out of Flintstones cartoon. Did anybody see this? Then they said he's been investigated for human trafficking. Human trafficking, bro. Somebody tell me what's going on, man, because I'm late. <laughs> uh, CJ Brandt just said, how many countries did you drive in? Uh, just curious. I'm going to tell you something, CJ. Whenever I went overseas, you know, they always took care of the boys. Uh, 
with buses, whether that was with uh, WCW or whether that was with some of the independent uh, companies that I worked for. Um, so no, I never drove. Drove. I remember driving uh, D the Crap's little car that was on the in Germany one time on the uh, just for a few miles. Uh, he had a little hot rod car. He's a, he's a German promoter. I remember doing that. So in essence, just one. But I didn't go very far because I probably would have told something up. But uh, Kyle Cutters, Kyle Cutter just said. Uh, What he needs is to change his name to Police Riot Diddy. Mark, what's up, Mark? Mark says, allegedly trafficking, I believe. Man, is that crazy? Man, I don't want the, I don't want the feds knocking at my door, bro. Come on, man. When the feds knock on your door, somebody in trouble, bro. And then they got all these people outside, like, you know, like one of those Colombian drug dealers, like uh, Carlos Escobar, like, hey, baby, we kicking the doors down. Don't try to hide under the bed. Get out the closet. Come out the attic. Wherever you are, I'm coming for you. Man, does anybody need? I don't need that, brother. What did P. Diddy do, man? Lord have mercy, Jesus Christ. Whoo, Lord Jesus Christ. Jimmy. Uh, my system still is not working, man, so I can't send you an invite until I get all of that fixed. You and Sonny, and I don't know how long that's going to take. Uh, just in case, because uh, I see you said Jimmy is watching, just in case uh, you was wondering why you didn't get an invite to that. As you guys well know, Jimmy is uh, you know, on on Monday nights with me, but as of right now, I can't, I can't send him an invite until I get my system fixed. But I can come on and talk. I just can't have guests. So, Jim, until we get that fixed, man, but we'll get it done, man. Hey, wait a minute. Jay Spice, what's up, bro? But I'm I'm like, this is crazy. This is crazy. I saw something about traffic, too. I'm just trying to figure out, when, you know. I'm looking at everything that's going on in sports now. I'm looking at everything that's going on um, with the uh, NCAA. The NBA is getting ready to start the playoffs here in a week or two. And, you know, that's what I'm keeping up with, trying to keep up with the NFL trades and free agents and things of that nature, as you guys well know, just so we can come on and talk about it a little bit. And professional wrestling here and there. I see WWE is getting ready to go into – WrestleMania with a bang, and I'm really kind of enjoying that, brother. You know, I I, I do like the uh, WrestleMania time of the year more than any other time of the year. Mark says uh, he's cooked, allegedly trafficking. Brother, come on, man. Can let me ask you something, Mark? Can P did it be that fucking dumb? I'm just asking. NFL about to start playing flag football. I don't, man, Kron, don't give up the ship yet, man. I know the hip, you know, tackle. I know and everybody's got different views on it, so on and so forth. But I think people on the NFL, I think the human athlete of today will have no problem adjusting to any kind of rules, especially when they want. Okay, Jimmy especially when they want more points on board. They changed the rules so much. Finally, the NFL defenses are starting to catch up, Cron. They're starting to catch up and slow some of these high-powered offenses down and some of these very good quarterbacks down and these offense coordinators down. Finally, they're starting to slow down a little bit, and they want those points back up. They just want those points back up, and if this is an out to do that, they're going to choose to do it. But today's athlete, today's athlete, is the most gifted athlete of all time the, walking the earth these days. And that's in every sport. So I honestly believe, Kron, they'll adjust. They'll adjust. 
Because for one thing, you don't see that tackle all the time. The only time people got a problem with it is when it turns your ankle, breaks your tibia or fibula or tear your knee up and things of that nature. So I think it's good and bad to everything. Uh, at the end of the day, but don't give up. Don't give up hope yet, Kron. You know, because if anybody can adjust to it, these guys today can adjust to it. And I, I, I will stand on that, man, because you got some of the best athletes known to man today. And another thing I think they'll start doing, excuse me, another thing I think they'll start doing is actually, because you got to remember something, Cron, tackling has really gotten bad. Guys don't concentrate on tackling like, like back in the eras I came up in. You didn't, your only time somebody really broke tackles back in those days was because you had running backs that was just so mean and angry and offensive linemen that was so mean and angry and they could break tackles. But those were the world-class running backs. You don't have a lot of world-class running backs in the league anymore. You got good running backs, but you don't seem to have a lot of great running backs, you know, like the OJ Simpsons of the world, the Jim Browns of the world, and, you know, the Eric Dickerson's of the world. You know, and those kind of the Barry Sanders's of the world, the Emmett Smith's of the world, you know, the Jerome Bettis's of the world. You just don't have those kind of guys that would just knock your head off, either with speed, power, or both. So I think they'll be all right, Cron. Telling what they man, I was tripping, brother. I was tripping, Mark. Dog, if you watch television, you see all these guys in the ride gear. Then they taking somebody out the house. They taking somebody out the house and they got they got the guy's hand like this. And the guy, I'm like, who's that guy? What did he do? But then he's nowhere around. Somebody need to let me know what's going on. What's going on? That's all I need to know. What's the word? That's all I need to know. If anybody knows something, I don't know. I know it's still early. Uh, Coach said, I had to book him. Slowly but surely, man. I had took a break from it over uh, the holidays and stuff like that. And early January because my mental state wasn't so good because of some tragedies I had in my life. But uh, I'm I'm coming back now. I got J Dog, what's going on? I got myself together and uh you can probably hear it in my voice. You know, you probably can hear it in my voice. Ray, you got a chance to see the James Bound duck? No, I haven't, man. No, I haven't. I haven't seen the James. What I did see is the dark side of the ring. Wait a minute, Kush. Kush is saying tomorrow the Alex Jones documentary drops on HBO. It's going to be highly controversial. Can't wait. I'm going to tell you something, Kush. I've been watching Alex Jones for years, bro. And like I said, the biggest mistake Alex Jones ever made. Now, they never cared about nothing Alex Jones said. He was never part of mainstream media. They would never let him really get on mainstream media, except for that a couple of times. Remember when he came on uh, The View and uh, he was talking about, I guess something was going down with, uh, what's his name? Uh, Charlie Sheen. And I guess Charlie Sheen... You know, something was going down with him. And he came on there to, to defend Charlie Sheen because Charlie Sheen was one of those guys that was advocating that 9-11 was an inside job. And Charlie Sheen was going to talk on a documentary that Alex Jones was doing. Now, I do remember that. But, man, when he got on the Trump train, that's your ass, bro. Y'all remember when I told y'all before the 2020 election? Anybody associated with Donald Trump, they're coming after your ass. 
Rudy Giuliani, how many millions? Hundred. Alex Jones, a billion. Donald Trump, half a billion. These people don't play, man. Hey, Queen, what's up? These people don't play. When they want your ass, your ass is grass. You see P. Diddy, what's going on with him right now? These people don't just come after you on the wing of a prayer. It was time to get you. It's time to get you. I done been in trouble before, and I don't mind telling the world this. I done been in trouble before. Out of my stupidity for once and my temper for another. Stupidity and my temper. They don't go hand in hand. But I was lucky. I was lucky. And you guys all know my brother's story. But at the end of the day, we survived. But when you rich, they ain't trying to kill you. They trying to break you. You're going to need every dime you got to get out of trouble. That's how they did Alex Jones. Rudy Giuliani, all those other guys that I can't even mention. And right now, you're seeing it play out with Donald Trump right in front of your face. And next is going to be P. Diddy. They don't play, bro. They don't play. This shit ain't no accident. None of it is. And anybody that thinks it's an accident or personal or this, that, and the other, just fuck with the wrong people at the wrong time, dog. <laughs> I mean, these allegations have been out about P. Diddy for years. Those allegations was about about um, um, uh, what's his name, R. Kelly, for years. But then we need to make some money off it. Hmm. Let's do a documentary. Hmm. Let's go kick the doors in. Hmm. Let's put somebody in jail. Hmm. It's profit in heartache and misery, bro. It's profit in it. Somebody just said uh, a minute ago about the documentary about uh, James Brown, a documentary about Alex Jones. Who's profiting off of that? Who's profiting? The guy who's sitting in the clink? Really? Or the guy who's making these stuff and then sell it to the distributors all over the world? Hmm. It's money and heartache and misery, bro. And like I said, nobody cared nothing about Alex Jones. Alex Jones had been preaching that thing about uh, not Columbine, but the other school shooting back in 2011. He'd been talking about that. Like I said, I had his app on my phone. I listened to him when I was driving. Some of the stuff, you know, I didn't agree with everything, but it's very entertaining, man. Just listening to certain things that he talks about. Now, I'm quite sure... Alex Jones was on to a lot of things. That was true, but does it really make a difference? At the end of the day, he's getting rich, man, because that guy sells all kind of vitamins. He sells all kind of merchandise. Brother, it's like, and then when he got attached to that Trump train and then Trump won and he's celebrating that stuff, brother, these people don't forget nothing. They don't forget. They just get revenge. That's why you see me, I choose my words carefully on this podcast. Cause I don't need no heat. I ain't got that. I ain't got I, uh, somebody hit you for fifty million dollars, and then they come back on the other lawsuit and go nine hundred and fifty million. That's a billion dollars. Who got a billion dollars just laying? Around? I don't know, brother. But uh, my name Bennett I ain't in it. Let somebody be it. Let somebody. Y'all can have that. You can count me out. Your piece on WWE Treasures is coming up next month. Now, you see that, Kron? I get paid for that, Kron. That's what I'm talking about. Go in and do my work. They can chop it up how they want. But send the check, Kron. I need that. Like those new action figures that I got coming out. Kron, I need that. I need that paper. I need the bag. 
I ain't gonna put in all this leg work for the hell of it. So when my book drops, you're gonna know why. Now, I did see the dog side of the ring with Terry Gordy and the one with Buff Bagwell. I think the one with Buff Bagwell was the drizzling shits. That I just believe that shit had so many lies in it, it wasn't funny. Then they tried to protect him by the how do you come up be a gigolo on television on a TV show and don't know that you got to do a sex scene with a woman? Who they want to believe that? Me, Ray Dog. I'd have been in a few commercials. I've been in a few movies. I've been in a few TV shows. I ain't, you know. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it ain't nothing that goes on on a set that you don't know exactly what's going down because you got to rehearse the shit over and over and over again before we go and start shooting. I've been there trying to fool me. Do I look stupid? Really? Cron say, Juliana needs more money. Shit, yeah, man. They, man look. Anybody see, anybody see the movie years ago with Will Smith when he did the Muhammad Ali deal? And the government started coming after Muhammad Ali because they were trying to shit him up. Because the guy was a major influencer before people were influencing. Yes, he was an influence to everybody that listened to him talk. And the only way you can deal with stuff like that is to shut him up. That's what happened. And you remember what in the movie? And I'm not. This ain't. This. This is not. You know, movies always character character things a little differently than they happen in real life. You remember his lawyer telling him, "When they come for you, they bust you out." Y'all remember that? If you don't remember, go back and look it up. And what he's saying is, you can't even go do it. You know, at that time, Ali couldn't even go do an exhibition to make money. They didn't even want him to feed himself. That's what they do to you, bro. They bust you out. But he got past it because. He had so many people, powerful people, that needed him. And the Supreme Court was in his favor. How many people got that kind of influence? You think Alex Jones got it? You know? You think Alex Jones got that? I'm telling you, brother, these people don't play. Hold on here. Hold on, guys. But yeah. Sid's business. <sighs> yeah, Queen, that's what I was just talking about. Did his house is being raided. But the one by Terry Gordy, I think, was very, very good. I really do. I think the one with Terry. Dale Richardson, is Trump going to become president again? You know what, bro? I don't know. But I do think this. With everything that's going on for the last eight years, and we got an election coming up at the end of the year. You guys know I've traveled around the world twice. And I've always gotten into conversations with people about the United States of America and how they how they look at the United States of America, bro. You, people don't realize this, but around the world nowadays, the United States doesn't have a real favorable opinion from Europeans, Middle Easterners, people in Asia, uh, Africa even. They don't really look at the United States the way they used to look at the United States. I don't think I don't think this government really cares, though. But I think it's a chance. But I know the world will look at the United States totally different, especially if this is the country, the beacon of democracy of what the whole world looks to. But now when you if you're from another country, stuff like that. You look at this country just like you look at every other country around the world. It ain't nothing special no more in their eyes. It ain't nothing special no more. 
So if Trump get back in, I don't ever want to hear another politician say nothing about another country and what goes on over there. Because at the end of the day, we're no different. But that's the system we live in. So anything is possible, baby. When you were in the NWO, I wanted to see you feud with your brother and Dog Faith Gremlin <laughs> would come in to say, leading to a feud between you and Big Papa Pump and both to you. Ah, that would have been too much like right, Eric. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, man. Queen says, Homeland Security raided his houses on sex trafficking. I want to see. Wait a minute. Y'all remember Hard Body Harrison that used to work with us? Didn't they get him for that? Now, you telling me that P. Diddy is doing the same thing Hard Body Harrison was doing? I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. But anything's possible. Anything's possible. And hard body going to jail for life. Who was that talking about Dan Snyder out there? Oh yeah. So uh so man, these are extraordinary amazing time. That's why I look at it and go, wow, man, this is you know, I just had a, a birthday for my brother, my, my brother Donald over the weekend and my other brother, uh, Danny, my other brother, Booker and I, and we were having, and one of my sisters, uh, Benita, we were all having this conversation just the other day, man, about the world we're living in now and how different it is from the world we grew up in. Diddy was screaming, vote or die. Now he's probably going to be screaming, live or die. <laughs> Come on, Mark. Golly, man. Y'all too cruel, man. Come on, man. That, that, that's too cruel, bro. That's too cruel. Uh, that's just man did it just trying to get by man okay so he set up the deal with the ex-girl and stuff like that so what so what calcutta said i just read an article on p diddy raid and they're still investigating they're gonna play that probably all night where is Diddy? Uh, Cal Cutter said, that's ridiculous. If you're doing this type of work, you should know that comes with the work. Sound like Buff didn't want to. Exactly. He didn't want to admit what the hell was really. I mean, come on, bro. I didn't know. They didn't tell me. Nobody smartened me up. I was on the, we were doing the scene and nobody, oh God, man, whatever the fuck ever, bro. God bless him. Speaking of boxing, you think Tyson overselling the pro? Well, no, he can't. you can't oversell something when you're trying to make money off the cushion. You're trying to make money off something. You got to do what you got to do, bro. You go on every paycheck. You know, uh, every ticket sold. So you don't do nothing for free. You got to realize Mike Tyson's name sells this fight. Mike Tyson is still an extraordinary person that people still gravitate to his name. When Mike Tyson was at his height, he was a star, man. He wasn't a manufactured star. He was a star. People paid to come see him fight. 
They just paid to come see the man. That's excitement when you're one of those kind of people, depending on, I don't care what sport it is. It's like when Carl Lewis was the fastest guy in the world. People just wanted to see Carl Lewis. They paid him money just to show up. You know? But nowadays, you see guys in athletics and sports, they know their wealth nowadays. Just like Caleb Williams. That's coming out of USC right now. And just like when Eli Manning came out and John Elway, when they came out, they knew their wealth. And whenever you get the ball in your corner, you got to use it. And you always hear people go, oh, man, he's an asshole doing this and blah, blah, blah. Brother, it's still business. And when it's about business and the ball is in your favor, you got to take advantage of it. That's why so many young men and women. Hold on. That's why so many young men and women lose their edge. Because somebody talked them out of knowing their wealth. Yes. Yes. And when you can control your destiny in any way, shape, or form, go do it. It's your life. Forget about what everybody else is saying. Because at the end of the day, they don't live with you. I'll never be afraid of somebody's thought. Because you ain't got enough power to do nothing about nothing I do. Never be afraid of somebody else's thought. Rely on what you want to do and put yourself in position to do what you want to do. Because it's your life. You don't get but one. You don't get but one life. So if you're in position to control your destiny in any way, shape, or form, because that's what you want, go do it. Forget about everybody else. Oh, he's an asshole. His daddy's an asshole. Fuck y'all. It's my life. Know your wealth. If I'm the number one guy, I'm going to do what number one guys do. I want this, that, and the other. I'm going to play here, and I don't want to play there. What you going to do? Tell me to go play somewhere else? No, you're not. That is why I bring up these young athletes today and these young men today to, to know their wealth. Because back in those days, just imagine if Mike Tyson had a new his wealth. Just imagine if we, if he was as knowledgeable as he is after he got out the business. Just think if he was that knowledgeable when he was in the business. You ever see the Rocky movie? How many of y'all seen the Rocky movie? When Apollo Creed chose Rocky to fight. And Apollo was in that room and they was doing business. And Apollo was telling everybody what to do. We're going to do it this way. We're going to do it that way. Because I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. There wasn't nobody telling Apollo. They was giving some advice to him. But at the end of the day, who was the boss? This is a movie, but I'm just telling you how things go. Who was the boss? Apollo. Y'all remember that? He knew his worth. I'm the champ. Don't nobody tell me what to do. We're going to do things the way I like to do them. And somebody come up with a suggestion. If it don't sound good to me, ain't nothing happening. Because all y'all eating off me. Yeah. You think you're going to eat like this when I'm not around? Or if I fire your ass? You're eating off me. Shut up and get in line. Queen says, Puffy was beating on Cassie and he killed Kim Porter. He's poison. And if that's true, why isn't he in jail? I know everybody that worked with that record label. All of them did, except for Al B. Sure. And he almost died. And the way his career plummeted, <laughs> I guess they killed his career. Goodness. <laughs> Maybe Gail King and Oprah has. Ah, you never know, man. 
I'm just saying, I don't put anything past anybody. Dale Richardson just asked, uh, let's talk about boxing. What AJ taking out UFC guy in second round? I'm going to tell you something. Dale, really and truly, if anybody knows anything about only the uneducated actually thought that Francis Ngano had a chance in that fight. You can't just pick boxing up like a, a like you walking down the side rock and pick up a, a play pistol or something like that. You go pick up a play pistol and then think you're going to rob a bank with it. It don't work like that. But I think a lot of people out there that's really not educated about the true form of what real pugilism is. You know, and then they look at what happened with him and the Gypsy King and think, okay, I heard Joe Rogan say, oh, man, he's such a big motherfucker, man. He just... We just smash his people, blah. Because you don't know shit about real fucking fighting. It's no way a UFC fighter, a MMA fighter, is going to go hand to hand with the best people on earth. Anthony Joshua is one of the top three people on earth that does what he do. I said earth. Anybody remember that you live on a planet, planet with seven billion people? And I'm in the top three. Seven billion people. And some dude that just broke out from a camp in some part of Africa. Became an MMA star. And now you're going to whoop everybody's ass. Man, please stop this. I just like and then people like just like the Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor thing when he fought Floyd Mayweather. You really think if Floyd Mayweather, who was eating Jack in the Box sandwiches a week before the fight, you really think if Floyd Mayweather wanted to eat this man like a bowl of collard greens within 30 seconds, he couldn't have? I mean, come on, man. Let's stop this. So in essence, Dale, that wasn't a fight. That was a lesson. That was let the whole world know. I don't play on my job. And don't walk in here thinking you're going to take, like Mr. C T said in the Rocky movie, I pity any fool that try to take what I got. And you're not even from here. Man, come on, brother. Stop this, man. People believe anything nowadays, man. Any fucking thing. Conor McGregor's got a chance. What? Oh, my goodness. Francis Nogano got a chance. What? Anything can happen. Really? Anything can happen. That's a damn shame, bro. That people actually believe. Anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen on a football field. Anything can happen on a baseball field. Anything can happen on a basketball field, uh, court. Because all those guys are all at the same level. Depending on who got their shit together and who doesn't. But one-on-one, -on -one, a pugilist against a MMA guy in my sport. Brother, that's just like putting. That's just like putting Mario Andretti against a kid on the street that does donuts in his car on the weekend. <laughs> and then people actually believe this shit, man. How some people just like getting robbed. But I, hey, man, I'm down. I like both of those guys, man. They both made a ton of money. I can say that about Francis Nagano. You made a ton of money, and I hope you spend it well because I'm going to tell you right now, if that man wanted to, every single solitary dime of that money would be for medical bills. Yes. You're lucky you're not behind a building somewhere picking yourself up out of the trash. You know, 
Alpha, what's going on? Diddy is behind some mysterious death that have opened over the years. Not to mention some of the slimy stuff he had going on with men and women. Brothers, just like I said, when they come, they don't play. They're going to let you do what you do until it's time. Until it's time. And when they knock on the door, baby, you can't hide. Not with the guys got riot gear and they, you know, remember they did Ruli Giuliani's house like that. I'm like, man, I don't need, I don't need that kind of heat, man. Call me up. Say, hey, man, Stevie Ray, come up here. We need to talk to you. Do that to me. I don't want all my neighbors seeing y'all. Ray dog, get your ass up. Put your clothes on. They don't even say that. Kick the dough in. You sitting there in your drawers. Eating some Cheetos and watching TV. They don't care. <laughs> they don't care, man. Take you, rough you up. Hey, man, can I put my clothes on? Shut up. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing, man, because, like I said, I've been in trouble before, so it ain't cool, dog. It ain't cool, man. Once you get rich and powerful, brother, that's a hell of a drug, man. Like Rick, like uh, Rick James said, man, that's a hell of a drug. Rich and powerful, man. You think you can get away with anything? Uh, Dale says, "Fear is the best heavyweight." Well, he gonna we gonna find out, Dale. Because you got to realize styles make fight. Even if you are considered the best, if you haven't went up against a certain style yet, we don't know. We don't know. But we're going to find out when he gets in there with uh, Alexander Usyk. We're going to find out. I'm going to tell you right now, the way he looked against Francis Nagano, Lord have mercy, Jesus Christ. What you going to do against that machine? Because that boy don't slow down. That's the thing about uh, Alexander Usyk. He won't, He makes you fight at a pace that you're not used to. And heavyweights don't really, they like to pick their own shots, fight at a certain pace. Even though this guy's a heavyweight, he's not a large 250, 60 pound heavyweight. And brother, it's like a track meet fighting this guy. He never slows down. So that's going to be interesting. McGregor has been civilized from that money flight with Floyd. They took that money to the bank. Connor doesn't have that fire no more. That's why he's not so hyped getting into the octagon. I honestly think Connor, you know, you got to realize the competition catches up. The competition catches up. I don't, you know, you can have all the fire in the world, brother. When people are better than you, they're better than you. When Conor McGregor was beating all those guys that were smaller than him, because, you know, when they, he fighting at 145, you know what I'm saying? And then he ballooned up to 160, stuff like that against those little guys. He could beat those guys easy. But once he started fighting the guys his size, the top guys, you see what happened. It ain't got nothing to do with fire, brother. It's desire of the other fighters. They're not afraid of you like those little guys were afraid of you. They're not afraid of him no more. And then you want to piss Khabib off. Okay, Khabib didn't even know how to promote stuff. I'm not from here, brother. I'm from Russia. I fight bears. I'm a Muslim. I got to pray five times a day. So this hype game that you're doing, I'm taking everyone very, very serious. And when I see your ass in that ring, I'm going to try to twist your fucking head off and make you look like the girl that was on the exorcist. And that's what you saw. Then the guy jumped over the fence and went off the people in the audience. That dude was ready to kill somebody that day, bro. Do you remember that alpha? And then caught on the floor. It, it was just, it was just promoting. It, I was just, I was just playing. It was, it was just promoting. Not in this dude's mind. If it hadn't have been the referee there, he would have killed that man if he wanted to. Just letting you know. 
If I got beat like that, no. The fire be gone too. Calcutta said, oh, standing there naked. Calcutta, you better know it, man, because they don't get, you know, they, they, don't, <laughs> they don't let you know they're coming. <laughs> why they raid his house, like, why they raid Diddy's house like they do a no-knock no warrant in Beverly Hills? <laughs> this shit is crazy. I'm losing my mind, bro. I'm losing my mind. This world is crazy. I didn't even give y'all the phone number, man. 832-243-4428. If you want to call into the show and ask any questions, 832-243-4428. Say it one more time. 832-243-4428. You want to call in and ask a question. But that's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Dale said, are you going to Philly for WrestleMania? Shit, no. I don't give two shits about being around that crazy ass shit, man. You know, maybe next year. Uh, got a couple of conventions coming up, you know. I just... No. No. I can put it about as simple as that, Dale. I'm not one of those guys... Uh, Connor's cardio isn't shit and no ground game. Like I say, the higher you go up, the better the guys are. And punching somebody and knocking them out don't work against those guys. Those guys can punch too. You see what happened to him when he got with a guy his size. He beat him the first time. Uh, what's his name? The kid from Louisiana. The second time, kid knocked him out. Third time, Connor broke his leg. I mean, He's still a good draw. He's still a good draw. But the level of competition is just, man, no sport sits still. Sports always evolves. Talent gets better. Everything gets better. While you running around here trying to be a movie star and a boxer, these guys trying to get their bag, bro. And they don't play. And if I can make money off twisting your head off, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. If Paul beats Tyson, then everyone will point out the 27-year. I Look, did you? the only thing that's going to beat Mike Tyson is father time. Did you see what... Uh, Jake Paul looked like against Lil Fury. And Lil Fury just got in the game. He had about two, three fights. Now, if Mike can get five good rounds in, I think Mike got a chance. But if you look at uh, Paul, come on, man. Come on, man. Guy couldn't even knock out uh what was the other MM MMA fighter name? Guy he ain't never boxed before. You know, Alpha Zay, the new Roadhouse movie looks like crap from the previews. That's the thing, man. When you get a new movie coming out. Never try to compare the movie to the movies before. Because if you do, you're going to cheat yourself. It's just like I went to see the premiere a couple of years ago of that new Coming to America. And I didn't even compare the movie to the first movie. The shit was garbage. Whether or not another coming to America ever came on before it ever been in a movie before. That shit was horrible. That's why you ain't never heard of it again. I don't even think they even put it on HBO. If they did, I didn't see it. Horrible. I don't know who talked somebody into putting up financing for that movie. But Eddie Murphy and them took the money and ran. Took the money. Because that shit was horrible. 
Now, I hope Roadhouse is not like that because, you know, yeah, Nate Diaz. That's what I'm talking about, Alpha. Did you see the fight against Nate Diaz? Now, imagine if that was Tyson. Uh, Ray Dog, uh, you imagine when uh, you notice when Tyson does his promos for the fight, he looks like he's reading lines off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god man mike try to do his thing uh kush come on man <laughs> well the ones that i pay attention to alpha talking about uh giving a preview of movies you know the ones that i you know watch i went to a premiere for that one I would never go see it at the movies. I would never stream it. Matter of fact, I could care. I, I'm trying to forget that I saw coming to America. It was that bad. Plaga said he started watching uh, Roadhouse and fell asleep. Damn, man. How you, how you, how the fuck? How the fuck you be watching the damn new movie and then go to sleep on the shit, man? Come on, man. <laughs> you must be very tired or very bored. Which one was it, man? Because if you're really into the movie, man, you go, you don't just go to sleep. You do that looking at the news, like when they breaking in P. Diddy's house. That's when you go to sleep. <laughs> looking for human trafficking. Oh my Jesus Christ, man. That's this is crazy. I don't even know what to say. I swear to God, I don't know what to say. Man, oh man, oh man. But hey man, I just want to come on and talk a little bit about what's going on out there in the world. Like I said, we got WrestleMania coming up in a couple of weeks that uh that I'm very excited about. And uh, me and Vince on the Black and White show, we talked about AEW last week uh, on our show. But you know what, man? It, it, it's hard for me to talk about AEW because everything is just so confusing to me. I don't know if it's me. Maybe y'all need to, you know, hit me to the game or something like that. But it, everything just seems so confusing. I don't know. I don't know. I, it's... Some of the stuff to me on the show just doesn't make make a lot of sense to me. But maybe I just don't pay, pay attention enough. Maybe that's my problem. I don't know. <laughs> Flogger said he wouldn't fall asleep if they were breaking into Diddy's house. Well, they weren't breaking in, but, you know, it wasn't like breaking in like a burglar, but breaking in like the government. Like, we looking, we looking for you. You, Mr. Diddy, can you come out, please? <laughs> Can't make some of this shit up, bro. Golly. Hey, man. Like I said earlier in the show, brother, if you're doing something wrong, if you're doing something bad, if you're going against the grain, and that's why I use those politicians. That's why I used R. Kelly to name. That's why I used Donald Trump. That's why I used Rudy Giuliani. That's why I used uh, 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 several people. Alex Jones. That's how they get you, brother. They take every dime you got. It took O.J. Simpson every dime he had to get justice. He'll never, he'll, you know, good thing you got a good pension to live off of. Because that's what they do, man. They bust you out when they want you. If somebody looks at their watch and go, hmm, ah. Eh. Anybody see Eddie Murphy in 48 hours when he was acting like a cop? And he looked at all those people and he said, let's see what I can fuck with next. That's how they think. Who's next? Who can we fuck with next? Hey, what about Diddy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to get him anyway. Let's go. Hey, bro. I, you know, I just think it's kind of that way. I, I could be wrong. 
<laughs> Dale said, Alf, do you think Cody is take, taking the title away from Reigns? I don't think so. But time just might be right. Just might be right, especially since they done brought the legacy and all that stuff in. Uh, Mark just said they're going to make the uh, – damn, they move you out the way, Adam, before I can move your thing about the storyline. See if I can bring you back down. Unless people are wearing their Mickey Mouse watch with the broken hand. Yeah. Yeah, Alpha, Cosby, same thing. 50 years later. He gave me some black mollies. I went to sleep. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Uppers, downers. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I mean, in an age where everybody doing drugs, people complain about drugs? I, okay, I don't get it. <sighs> oh, my goodness. What is that? Hey, these some... Black Molly's get you high, baby. That's Bill talking, not me. Ooh, let me have one. Ooh, shit, Bill. The room is spinning. <laughs> yeah, baby. Spinning. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man. Let me shut up, man. Before they come get my ass. Let me let me shut up. <laughs> Oh, uh, the, wor the world we live in, y'all. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, man. Bill said, man, I'm minding my own business and somebody knocking on my door. Somebody like, you didn't rape some women 50 years ago. 50? Golly, man. I can't even remember. I can barely remember my high school girlfriend, bro. How are Bill supposed to remember all them one nighters? <laughs> what? Oh, Lord. But anyway, y'all. Power on. Oh. Uh, Power on. Bluetooth woo. pairing. Bluetooth connected. Plogger said Puff started offering his former artists their publishing back as long as they wouldn't speak about him. Yeah, how far that's going to go, Plogger? Because it's like this, dog. Calcutta, Plogger, y'all already know, Dale. If you know it, if somebody else know it, they know it. Y'all already know that. Because when I come to your house and start asking you questions and then talking about implicating people like that, like the people, he was, some of the artists, and I'm going to implicate some of the people that you know and you too, you're going to sing like a bird. You know, you're going to sing like a bird. Somebody just asked me, was me and my brother going to team up? No, I ain't teaming up with nobody. No time soon. But appreciate the question but at the end of the day everybody out there that's watching on my phone on Facebook man I got to get ready to get out of here man but I appreciate everybody watching the show and I'll be back tomorrow night and man maybe we'll find out more stuff on the Diddy case I'm gonna go back downstairs right now and look up some more stuff I got to know what's going on why do I care about this kind of stuff, man? I'm really showing how really messed up I am, man. I, I shouldn't be like that. That's not me. But it's funny to me. Y'all gotta realize, I don't, I don't, I don't hope ill on anyone, and I bear no one any ill will. But when things like this happen, it's kind of funny to me, man. When you put them in context, I guess that's what I was talking about tonight. Cause some of it's so funny. 
Rudy, what are you doing in there? Oh, nothing. I was, oh, oh, just playing on my computer. I didn't do anything. I didn't say anything about those two women that was hiding the, the voting stuff. I, I didn't say anything. But bring your ass out here. You're going to court. 87 million. You got it? Uh, I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Somebody help me! Somebody help me! See you guys tomorrow on Facebook, man. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, man! This 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 shit is this shit is entertaining to me, man. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. You know, because I like I said, I've never seen some of this stuff before, bro. And. uh as bad as it is, we got to make things humorous, man. If we don't, we're going to lose our minds, man. You know? We don't want to do that. But everybody out there that's watching, appreciate everybody coming in tonight. We got to, man. But we'll drive ourselves crazy if we let this stuff get to us, man. You gotta remember something. We live in someone else's world. Who those people are, I have no idea. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Calcutta just said, why can't those guys follow Vince? Example, pay them off. I think they did, Calcutta, but man, that just buys you time. That just buys you a little bit more time because you can't help yourself. You can't stop. And once you're so enthronged in something and you can't stop, you're going to keep right on doing it. Power, wealth, when you got it, it's like a drug. It's intoxicating. You can't stop. Hey, baby, we all can learn from it. Greed is good. That's what Michael Douglas said. <laughs> but I ain't say it. But I guess it is good to a certain point, as long as you don't cross that barrier. But everybody out there, I appreciate the show. See you guys tomorrow night. And if you don't do anything else, always. Be one. Peace.